Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Entitled Parents Reddit video. In our first story, an entitled mom at the zoo kicks a sweet wallaby. Let's jump right in. So I work at a zoo in the Midwest of the USA. It is my favorite place in the whole world. I have worked here as a volunteer, then as an intern. I currently work at the membership desk and have applied to work with our education department. I have been working there since maybe I was 14 and know most of this zoo's inner workings better than my own home. I even have a few animals who recognize me for better or for worse. We have an Australian exhibit. As an intern, I did a lot of work with the wallabies. As such, a lot of them sort of recognize me and show greater comfortability with my presence, especially one of the younger females, Ruby. All of our wallabies are pretty cautious animals as they are in nature. Ruby, on the other hand, is much more rambunctious. Our Australian exhibit is free range for them and a pair of black swans. It's lovely, and they have a bunch of scattered hangouts. Most of these spots are away from the path and away from guests, but one is very close to the door. Ruby likes to spend her time here. Her first day on exhibit, she walked up behind a four-year-old and sniffed him while the kid petted her. I'm not shocked. They're about the same size and hardly seem a threat. But she's also gone up to adults, pulled on a pocket flap and scampered off. She frequently walks up to me, and I talk to her while she stares at me. She is an unusual girl, but I love her to death and back. Now that I don't work down here anymore, I don't see her as often, but I like to make regular trips to say hello. She is a little bigger now than the photo I'm showing you here, but wallabies don't get terribly big. She's still sweet as ever, and she will still come up to say hello. Recently, I'm down there squatting as I speak to her. She's looking at me. I'm happy as can be. It's not a terribly busy day. The weather is kind of cold, so there are maybe 10 groups in the entire zoo. I heard a mother and her two kids come in. I'm speaking to Ruby for a bit. I can hear her scoff and talking to her kids when suddenly I hear someone running. I assume it's the kids. Ruby glances over and I'm about to as well when I see the woman's foot collide with Ruby. I yelled in horror as Ruby goes down. She twitched, stunned by the unwarranted assault. I spring up and immediately am standing over her, shoving this woman away. I'm a good 6 foot 2 inches and pretty overweight, but I'm reasonably strong. This lady already looks pissed. She's just over four feet tall and a bit of a pudgy woman. She begins screaming at me. How dare you touch me, you blank? You just kicked my wallaby. Yes, I said she's mine. She is one of my best friends. Screw your oversized robot rat. How dare you spread these lies to my kids? You and your children need to leave right now. I'm not going anywhere. Not till you stop spreading your lies, you blank. Ruby at this point recovers and scampers off. The woman attempts to kick her by kicking between my legs and instead kicks me. Ow, you crazy witch, stop it! She screams incomprehensibly at the top of her lungs, geez, the lungs on this woman, and continues doing so with nothing I say being heard until our awesome security guard shows up a keeper in tow. What's wrong? Is she okay? Did the swan bite her? Black swan bites were the only animal attacks we really ever had. She kicked Ruby. What? Who's Ruby? One of our wallabies. This SOB just assaulted me, flipping arrest him right now. Our security guard deals with psychos like this every once in a while, mostly anti-maskers though. Miss, you need to come with me. About this time, I realize the kids are gone. One is over at the Kookaburra enclosure, the other is nowhere to be seen. He apparently wandered off to the petting zoo and got spit on by the llama, which he thought was the funniest thing, which caught the attendant down there's attention as this rat was alone. We were trying to drag her and her other kid out who kept making Kookaburra calls best to his ability. She keeps yelling about our lies, then suddenly took off and ran at one of the large groups of wallabies. Now this is a bad idea, because the wallabies are now on high alert and there were a couple of the babies and two pregnant females in this group. This sets them off. Three of them begin attacking her by kicking at her, 
similar to how a kangaroo does, but less effective. She starts screaming as they growl and kick at her, such a glorious sight as she runs back to the entrance of the exhibit wailing, a couple wallabies giving chase bless their tiny little hearts. Later, the security guard pieces together that she was some flat earth fanatic and apparently Australia and in turn everything in the Australian exhibit is not real, justifying her kicking Ruby, which. But we technically had no right to hold her and call the cops for it. We could only eject her as our policy stated, until I mentioned she kicked me. So the cops were called and she was dragged off after we explained to the cops what this witch did. She got assault charges and animal abuse charges from what I was told. Now normally I'd say that justice was served, but I can't help but feel an unholy hatred for this woman. I have become aware Ruby is now super skittish even more than the other wallabies. She got a nasty bruise on her side, though it's hard to see from a distance, but after a month it still persists. Ruby still comes up to me, but only if no one else is around. During the day, she tends to hide. That witch killed Ruby's spirit, and for that I hope she rots in hell. Now, thanks for listening to me rant. I've had other dramas, but honestly I think this was the worst. Probably because of Ruby's reaction. I don't care if you believe in flat earth, leave the poor animals out of it. Story 2, That Time An Amazing Mother Saved Me From A Fossil Hating Entitled Mother This happened many moons ago when cell phones weren't smartphones yet and Brad and Angelina had only two children together. I worked one summer at a very popular local dinosaur museum. It was, and still is, one of the best jobs I've ever had. The people were amazing, all geeks, and we were all from different walks of life, so it was so neat to hear stories from all over my country. Anyways, on to the main part. The museum was awesome and built around the principles of evolution. You could back then. Things have changed a lot since I worked there. In the museum, you would walk through the different eras of our planet and see the corresponding fossils of the creatures that lived then. Lots of fossils and huge ones. We had had some problems with creationists protesting outside our museum, saying that evolution wasn't real and that we were propagating the ideas of the devil. They'd show up with signs denouncing our museum, trying to dissuade people from coming in, but honestly, it's the middle of a literal desert. It's a major tourist attraction and it's air conditioned. No one was being turned off by them. One day, I'm minding my own business at work, wandering through the various expositions to help anyone or talk about dinosaurs with children, which was the best part of the job. I'm in one of the theropod display rooms, and a woman comes up to me to ask about the main display feature, a complete fossilized skeleton of a giant T-Rex. She asks how fossils are formed, so I begin the tale of death and sediment when she interrupts me. Here's how it goes. The cast was me, this creationist crazy person, and my savior mother who was with her five kids that were incredibly well behaved. So once the dinosaur died, it got covered in sediment and other things. Where was the copper? Pardon? The copper. Our priest showed us how you can fossilize anything, even a teddy bear, by leaving it in a copper bowl filled with water. So where was the copper? Smug face. I'm sure there's copper in the sediment, but that's not how these were fossilized. It happened over many thousands of years. 6,000 years to be precise, when our earth was created and the devil put these horrible things in here to try and tempt us all away from Jesus. At this point, her voice is raised and people start looking at us, including my savior mother and her gaggle of children. I go into customer service mode. I understand that your faith has different beliefs than those presented here. However, we present the scientific theory of evolution here, where these fossils took millions of years to end up here. How can you stand here and lecture these innocent children about the devil and his workings? You are poisoning their minds and souls with this filth. She's gotten pretty loud by this point, and Savior Mother has wandered closer with her kids, who are all looking at this woman with big shocked eyes. Entitled Mother continues for another minute about how we were all devil-worshipping sinners. Yep, I remember that accusation clearly. 
when Savior Mother interrupts her. Stop right there. You paid money for a ticket to a museum that peddles devil worshipping? Her kids don't say a word, but they all look at Entitled Mother with restrained smiles, and as the conversation goes back and forth between the women, their faces do too, like a ping pong. I'm trying to save your children's souls. And I'm trying to save this young lady from your BS. If you don't believe in evolution, why would you come to a place that promotes it? The Entitled Mother splutters and can't answer. Then Savior Mother goes in for the kill. And I heard your copper bowl explanation. Can you please show me where in human history someone would have made a copper bowl big enough for those? She looks at a giant T-Rex looming over us like an awkward evolutionary fart. Entitled Mother had no answer and starts to panic. I ditch my hard-eyed stare at Savior Mother and put my customer service face back on. If you'd like to lodge a complaint, please follow this path and it will lead you to the exit. The complaint box, which is monitored by our director, is on the left. Entitled Mother glares at me and Savior Mother, but doesn't want to offend the children, so she scuttles off. Savior Mother and her kids burst out laughing as soon as Entitled Mother's out of earshot. Her eldest, like 15 years old, is literally bent double laughing, and the younger ones are praising their mom. She thanks me for my good service and I thank her profusely for her support. I also encouraged her to check out the complaint box on her way out too. Why? Because it's directly under a portrait of Darwin. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, subscribe and click on that notifications bell. We would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.